Good morning, everybody. Welcome to week 13 of our class. I hope all of you all are doing well. Um, welcome to all um, the students, both online as well as the e-learning students who've joined. Um, trust all of you are doing well. OK. Um, uh, I hope you do remember what we did talk about last week. We had started the entire topic on overcoming challenges. We looked through different situations um, in, in that uh, specific topic and how, <clears throat> how the challenges are a way and a part of life and how we can overcome them. So we looked at some principles. We looked at uh, what are some of the steps that we can take to uh, overcome these challenges. And we also looked at some biblical instructions of different life uh, situations as well. Uh, today will be the first part of uh, our lesson. We will be doing yet another part of it of how we can um, release the past and move forward with whatever situation or challenges we've gone through. How do we release what has taken place? and go forward, move forward. So if you're following, th uh, following through in your uh, books, I'm on page 130 on the um, uh, soft copies and 129 on the hard copies, OK? So we're going to be focusing on how do we press forward by releasing the past. So last time we spoke about several situations that could come about. Um, the first part of our lesson, we spoke about several situations that can come about that uh, could cause conflict in a marriage relationship. And through these conflicts, there can be impending hurt, um, scars, wounds, uh, pain, uh, sorrow, all of that could happen. And uh, some of the uh, situations we spoke about was if there are un unmet expectations, if there's abuse in the relationship, if there's unfaithfulness, um, if there is negligence, uh, if there's abuse. So what we are going to look through this chapter is um, an encouragement, right, uh, to uh, how do we provide or how do we move past what's happened, move past the wounds and uh, keep from allowing the pain and the hurt of the past to stop us from really experience God's best or God's goodness for us. So uh, it, this is more a word of encouragement, especially for the ones who are wounded and uh, so that we can press forward with what God has for us, right? Um, as we had looked at the last time, that depending on the situation that comes by, um, there are there's a lot of uh, when when challenges take place, when difficulties take place, what accumulates is pain or emotional hurts and wounds or scars from a spouse. And this can come through different ways, through words, through actions, through deeds, through constant uh, criticism. Now, all of this can be extremely painful. Okay? And this is what leads into a person being scarred or uh, emotionally hurt. But um, uh, what we're looking at in this chapter is not allowing the pain of what has happened, of the challenges that have happened, to keep us away from what is in the future or what promises God has for us in the, in the future. So we look at how we leave past what has happened. So you release the past and receive healing for our uh, wounds, for our for the, for the hurt that's been caused, for the pain that's been caused, and find strength in what God has for us and move forward. So we want to release the past. We look at releasing the past, receiving healing, strengthening ourselves in the Lord, and moving forward. 
Um, and as we learn to do this, the, the person we look to is God, because he's promised to be the restorer of our souls, of our broken emotions, of our broken uh, dreams. Psalm 23, 3, he promises that. He says he is the one who restores our soul. He's the one who changes, who brings about, who repairs whatever brokenness that we are feeling. Right? When we look through, so we'll just look through some more verses and how um, it it is something that God desires uh, to do for us. Psalm 30, 11 to 12. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness to the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. O oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Uh, we also see that in Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 3, uh, a prophecy about, about Jesus. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison <clears throat> to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who are mourn, those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that may be glorified. So through these verses, you see different pictures of how restoration takes place. Healing the brokenhearted, beauty for ashes, oil of joy for mourning, garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So um, it reveals that God is the one who does this. He is the one who heals. He is the one who turns around. He is the one who provides. He is the one who consoles. He is the one who uh, replaces whatever has been lost into things that are that, that can bring joy, right? So we see that God is our restorer of our emotions, of all the hurt and the pain that we have gone through. So when we turn to him, we see that he comes and brings about this place of healing for us. How do we do that? One of the uh, things that, that is central in our belief and in our faith in the Lord Jesus is forgiveness, right? Just like uh, uh, the forgiveness that's been given unto us, we are to release it to those who may have hurt us, okay? Uh, and uh, the, the central truth and belief in Christianity is about the love and the forgiveness of a savior who came for our sins. And through that, he, he also encourages us to be in that place of forgiveness. Okay, So um, let's just read uh, 1 John uh, 2, 9 to 11. If you're following through in the book, it's page 130. In the notes, it is um, page 131. Right, so would somebody, page 131, would somebody read uh, 1 John 2, 9 to 11? And Luke 17, 3 to 4, both these verses. Come on, 1 John 2, 9 to 11. Bible college students, 
Yeah, go ahead. Ma'am, can you listen? Yeah. Can you hear? Sorry. Yes, yes, I can. Yes, I can. One John. Two, two. nine to eleven. Nine to two verse 9 to 11, it reads, If everyone claims I am living in the light but hates a fellow believer, that person is still living in darkness. Anyone who loves a fellow believer is living in the light and does not cause other to stumble. But anyone who hates a fellow believer is still living and walking in darkness. Such a person does not know the way to go having been blinded by the darkness. Thank you, Prince. Can you also read uh, Luke 17, 3 to 4? Luke chapter 17, verse 3 and 4. If another... So watch yourself. If another believer sins, rebukes that person, then if there is repentance, forgive. Anyone, if that person wrongs you seven times a day and each time turns again and asks forgiveness, you must forgive. Okay. Thank you. Thanks so much, uh, Prince. Right. So what, we are, what we've looked at here is, as I said, what forgiveness can do. Now, even when we are hurt by others, um, there's, there may be little that we can do to control the hurt that comes to us. Um, however, what we have the possibility to control is to keep ourselves from being in that place of hate. Because we understand that when, when, that when we carry hurt, bitterness against someone in our hearts, it can be a difficult uh, situation, not just for the relationship, but for us. And because of what uh, we have seen as a model of what Christ has done for us, we cannot, as believers, we cannot be carrying that bitterness or that uh, that uh, sin of hate in our hearts, because uh, when we um, harbor hate, when we harbor bitterness, we can end up doing things that will make us fall further. Right? We could end up doing things that uh, could hurt others hurt ourselves, as well as not stay in what God desires of us to do. So the, the medicine for hate is to be able to forgive the other person for the wrong that they have done. And uh, we have the example of Jesus, who was uh, betrayed. He was uh, put on the cross. Um, for nothing that he did, right? Even uh, for for no uh, uh, wrong of his, he took our sin, uh, even when there was nothing wrong with what he did and suffered pain for us. So when we look at forgiveness, um, it is a, it's something, it's a choice that we make. It's, something that we choose to do. Forgiving is something we choose to do. It's something that we commit to doing, to release and to let go of the anger or of the bitterness or of the need to um, uh, take revenge. Okay? Uh, giving forgiveness, when we give forgiveness, we're not waiting for that time for us to be healed and for us to be settled. Uh, but we are doing it uh, knowing that that's, that's a command that God has given uh, to us. So instead of keeping the anger or harboring the anger, 
we resolve it by releasing it to God. We resolve it by handing it over to God. So forgiveness also comes without any conditions. You are forgiving someone without the expectation that they will in turn do something for you, right? Maybe in turn, for example, not offend you anymore. But we are forgiving because of the command that God has given us. And that's where we decide. <clears throat> that's why it's called a decision. A forgiveness is a decision. And it's not because we feel, whether we feel it or whether we not feel it, it is a decision that we, we do. So it's, it's, uh, it's something that we extend even though we, are, uh, we don't feel like doing it. So it's a choice. It's a commitment. It's an act of your will, where, where, where you put forth the decision to forgive. Um, so when you are forgiving, now often there are times that people um, you know, sense that when you are forgiving, uh, you, you're more like a victim. Right, but the Bible tells us that uh, we are testifying of the love of Christ when we actually forgive, and we don't have. In fact, it brings us freedom when we are um, extending forgiveness. Okay, so when you grant forgiveness to someone, you are um, choosing not intentionally choosing not to cling on, to hold on to the offense that happened, which means even in conversation that you may be having with someone, you may be reminded of the offense, but you're choosing uh, to not bring up the issue over and over again. And that's where you say, when I've released forgiveness, I also give up the desire to cling on to that offense, to sit on it, to uh, you know, bring it up at a later point of time as a weapon. So that's what is forgiveness. And that's the power of forgiveness, that we are choosing, we are committing. It's a deliberate uh, action or a deliberate point of will that we're saying, I release this person and I know more will take the opportunity to bring back these offenses over and over again. Okay, So how do we release uh, the past is by forgiveness, by um, choosing to forgive, just like how we were commanded and taught to forgive. Okay, The next one is forgetting. <clears throat> so when we look at forgetting, uh, we are we are choosing to forget. Now it's not as if you will not be reminded of it, but you are choosing to forget. So when we look in through scripture, uh, there are very many verses which shows us as how God deals with our sins. Right? It talks about scripture tells us. As far as the east is from the west, so far have I removed your transgressions. Or that he has buried it to the depth of the sea. Or he wipes away our offenses. He remembers it no more. So that's what we are called to do. So we may recall. It may come to our memories, whatever happened. But we are choosing not to rehash it or to you're choosing to keep it aside right when when you have forgiven you're choosing to keep it uh, away so it also includes choosing to forget what has what has happened so that you're releasing that uh, releasing the hurt releasing the situation releasing the past releasing the offense that the person has done to you
Okay, so not only do we forgive, we choose to forget and we choose to let go. We choose to let go. So letting go means you are, again, letting go of dwelling on the uh, situation or on the um, experience in itself. You let go of that experience. So you're not allowing the hurt, the pain, the anger that is associated with that experience to become a heavy burden on you. You're releasing, you're releasing that to God, excuse me. <clears throat> you're releasing that to God and um, coming to a place to walk in that space of freedom. So just reading um, a verse from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it says, let us rid ourselves of everything that gets in the way and of the sin which holds on to us so tightly and let us run with determination the ra race that lies before us. So you get rid of everything that gets in the way. So any time a memory or any time a hurt or an experience comes in the way of running the race that is led before us, it says we rid ourselves of it. Or Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15, it says, Guard against turning back from the grace of God. Let no one become like a bitter plant that grows up and causes many troubles with its poison. So what it's saying here is that when we allow bitterness to take a root or it is there within us, it says it grows up and causes many troubles with its poison. So if there is that remnant of hurt, anger, bitterness inside, it's like keeping a bad seed in the soil. It will take root and it will grow to bring about a lot more of issues. So it is the power, it is to let go of the emotions, the experience, that in itself has caused us hurt. Another step of um, releasing the past and moving forward is to have the eyes of Christ in the way that we see the person. Okay, So if we have been wounded by our spouse and they, um, uh, you know, they have asked for forgiveness and they have repented, <clears throat> we are going to see them the way that God sees them. So how does God see them? It is completely forgiven, completely uh, made new. So we are also acknowledging them in the way that Christ sees them, that is clean and whole uh, without blemish. And that's how we're seeing them. Okay? Uh, to continue on with that, with the space of being able to um, release the past, it is to begin to engage actively in your healing and your recovery, especially from the hurts or the wounds that have happened. And one way to do that is to keep saying or confessing the positive that is founded on the word of God. Okay, so what we're doing is we are looking and acknowledging for all that God has placed in us, even though at that time we, we may be really hurt or in pain. So we're declaring um, the blessing even in that moment, even when we are at our low, lowest moment, we're declaring the word of God. We're declaring God's word like that uh, God's word, which acts like a balm of healing in our souls and uh, moving from there. So we're engaging actively. So what we're doing is we are willfully engaging in moving past. That is to keep looking for the, for the promises, that declaring the promise of 
of the blessing, that we keep looking back at what God's word says about blessing despite the pain that we are feeling. We are declaring the word of God so that it can act as a balm to us. Then also uh, 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 is to be able to uh, know that God is faithful to bring about newness in everything in our lives. Right? Uh, that whatever has happened, whatever issues have happened, God is able to restore and bring back, to repair to its original position what things were. And some of the examples that we see in scripture, uh, and, and the most common example we know of is in Job, right? Where Job's latter life was much more blessed than his first, right? Because of the way that he continued to abide and stand in uh, stand in faith. <clears throat> uh, then another example you see is uh, Joseph, where Joseph went through um, uh, thirteen years, seven, yeah, thirteen years of slavery, being put in prison, um, being uh, being uh, uh, betrayed by his own family by his um, uh, his employer's wife, by by other people who did good, who he did good to, the baker and the butler, right? All of that, he was able to move past because of, because knowing that God is the one who changes things. Uh, we see this even in David. David, uh, was uh, uh, was being pursued by King Saul, uh, you know, and he was living in the wilderness, living in caves and uh, in places where he just was was surviving. But from there, God brings him to the highest position in Israel as a king. Right? So, through all of life's challenges, we know that God's promise is to make all things new. And he's the one who restores us <clears throat> back to our <clears throat> original space, our original worth, <clears throat> fills us with confidence, and restores back to us that space of dignity. So when we look more and more to God, keep our focus more and more on, more on God, we continue to experience um, his healing experience, his ability to move past what has been challenging uh, in our lives. Okay, all right. Um, so uh, yeah, so we we were looking at this topic of overcoming challenges, and we've come to that end. These two chapters really focus on how we overcome challenges and move forward into the future. Uh, any thoughts and questions now before we move to our next slide? <clears throat> Maybe I think the question that I'd like to put forth is um, uh, even when we're talking about the power of forgiveness, right? And uh, the, the way that we see uh, the command of God and how we are to obey that, right? Uh, so, so just a thought or just, you know, maybe just a little bit to open a discussion. Um, what has been your, maybe your personal experience uh, yeah, so I think Sri Radha has brought that up. Sometimes, uh, I'm just reading her question. She said, sometimes it's very hard to release and move forward in certain, in these situations, what can we do? Okay, so yeah, that was exactly the question that I wanted to bring up. Um, and I'm sure all of us have been through different experiences in life, which has brought us to a place where we find it hard to release that forgiveness. It can be 
in our homes. It could have been in, among friends. It could have been trusted people. Mm, uh, it's uh, it it's also could have been in times where we didn't even know that some something was being done to us, right? At ages when uh, we didn't even have a choice about what was happening. And yet, you know, maybe later on as we grew up is when we knew or we began to understand the pain of what the other person's done or the consequences of that, right? So yeah, so Sri Radha, uh, I had the same question. So what are your experiences? What are your thoughts? Um, this is also to help and encourage one another, right? Because we've all been in this situation at some point or the other. Maybe some of us are going through it at this time. But uh, what, how can we draw from practical ways of, you know, we know what scripture says. We know that God wants us to forgive. But yet in practical reasoning, it is hard. So how do we move forward? So some thoughts. It's, it's open for discussion. Okay, we have, I think this is a good thing. We have around 10, 15 minutes. Uh, let's just open this for discussion. Everyone, come on. What are your thoughts? Yeah, something that I would like to share for what I learned about forgiveness is like maybe a few years back, there was this particular person I couldn't forgive. And it kept coming all over again. Like when I pray, you know, before getting communion or something, I'll go pray, Lord, I forgive this person and I'll receive communion. And then all over the thoughts will come back when I see. And again, before I could forgive something, the person does something else. And then it, it was harder and harder. So I had to remember, oh, this year, this person did that. And Lord, this year, this person did that. And it keeps coming in 2006, this happened, Lord. In 2008, this happened, Lord. So by the time, and then when it came to 2012, it would have been n number of things. Then it was so difficult. And I was asking God, Lord, I know you want me to forgive. And forgiveness is not just in one sentence, Lord. I just asked forgiveness and keep taking communion. It hurts me, Lord. I know it's wrong, but I'm not able to. Because by the time I come over something, something else happens. And mm -hmm. Lord, you help me, help me, help me. And it was ongoing. It was ongoing. And then one day, uh like i just cried out to god lord it's something that i am not able to bear it because it was reflecting in every other areas of my life it will affect the way i behave with my husband the way i behave with my uh daughter everything it was affecting the workplace and lord i cannot take it anymore and help me lord i just cried out to him lord no matter what i just mm -hmm. really this person and whatever that person is up to you deal with that person lord you speak to that person because you love that person and that's why you want me to forgive that person so mm. i then i released at that moment the joy and that i received i was thinking that you know uh, that i'm going to lose something but the joy that i received and from mm. then the Lord has been leading me so differently. Many blessings were released in my own personal life. I re I did not realize that I'm not for when I'm not forgiving that person, I'm withholding God's blessing over my life. He's a righteous God. He's a loving God. So I could feel I could see a lot of blessing in my life, and and I just walk in that faith because the more we release forgiveness, the more we enjoy God's grace, His presence, His fellowship, and He will mm -hmm. take care of us. He will remind us what to speak, how to deal with that person. He will give mm -hmm. us this. We won't become the same old person to, you know, like get fooled and like being allowing ourselves to, uh, God will show us, you know, this is the way, this is the way, just move mm -hmm. from, speak this person. So it is God and he mm -hmm. will take of us so but it was very difficult i i, I agree uh, that it was very difficult but with the power of the holy spirit and when we have our relationship with christ more than anything else up above hold that precious he will enable us he loves us and he'll take care of us thank you jackin thank you for sharing that wonderful good i hope uh, um that's that's the testimony, uh, Radha, even as Jackin was sharing. It's a testimony. Anybody else wants to share? What did you do personally to release forgiveness? Uh, 
So one thing that um, that I've realized is that <clears throat> when when we are, uh, you know, when someone has offended us, the more that we um, I'm using the word concentrate, but I think there's a better word you can use. But the more that we dwell, yeah, I think that's a better word, dwell on the wrong of what's been done to us as a result of the person, the more we look at, like, and, you know, in our minds, we have so many thoughts that run in our head. And very often these thoughts are like, you know, children in a playground. They are running here and there without any order, without any structure, without any discipline. And that's sometimes how the thoughts run in our head. And a moment, a trigger moment is enough for us to, uh, to get into this place of unorganized thought where we're always once something catches hold of us hold of our mind we're only thinking about that and so the more we dwell on it in the sense of how could the person do this didn't they know what were they thinking uh, you know it, it goes on and on and on that chatter keeps going on and on and on it kind of builds, I think even in our brain, it builds a certain pathway. You know, you must have heard of neural activity in the brain. It builds a certain pathway in the brain. And the more that we think of it, the more embedded, the more stronger, the more uh, intense, the more ingrained it becomes. But when we choose, and then so we're choosing and we're deciding and saying that, OK, does this dwelling on this person or on the thoughts about what has happened, does it really help me? Other than it making me miserable, it making my relationship with this person miserable, it's bringing about anger, sadness, guilt, all of that. Other than that, what good does it do? And often, we sometimes choose not to forgive, because in our minds, we think, if I forgive the other person, it will appear as if uh, what they have done is excused. OK? But that's not true. That's, that's only the way that our minds, it's a misconception of our thoughts. But uh, when we forgive, more than it helping somebody else, it helps us. It's like this. I, I heard a quote once that said, um, uh, unforgiveness is like swallowing poison and hoping that it will kill the other person, the offender, the person who's offended you. But actually not. You are being slowly destroyed by that unforgiveness. Now, I, I totally uh, empathize and understand how hard it is, especially depending on the gravity of the situation, to forgive, you know, uh, especially when something has been done to you, even without your knowledge or your permission, you may have been an innocent victim in that. But um, God has given us the ability to reason, to know what happens when we don't. Uh, so every time we dwell, we put our focus on the situation or on the person over and over and over again. The case builds higher and higher. So one of the things is choosing not to do that and saying, as it says here, right? Looking at the positive than the negative. So we are choosing to alter our mind from the offense to something else. 
So, but then the question again will come, but the question keeps coming up, but he did this, but she did that. And then you choose again, you know, to move aside. So to keep doing that is a practice. Uh, I know it's not a one-time process or a one-time, um, uh, you know, change, but it's something that happens frequently, regularly, over, over and over again. So choosing not to dwell, not choosing to keep thinking about what the offense of the person was, but choosing to let go. Right? Also looking at what it means when you are not in a place of forgiveness, how much it messes with your own life, how much it creates, um, uh, creates wrong thought processes in your, your own life is something that, again, moves you to act or work out differently. Okay. Any other thought? Anybody else? Anand, Prince, Rin, Ravali, anyone else? I'm sure all of us have had some experience that can be helpful to the other. Nina, anyone? Nobody? Okay, Sri Radha, I hope that answered some part of your question. Oh, yeah. And, of course, the, the, the fact that uh, forgiveness cannot come just only because we will it. It's the Holy Spirit that he's the one who guides us into all truth. He's the one who convicts us, right? And his work in us will enable that. So, you know, if you have reached that end point of saying, God, I can't do this, then it is calling on the Holy Spirit to work on behalf of you. And I'm sure he does it because that's God's will. That's the will of God that we forgive one another. It's his will. So he works in us accordance to his will, right? So if you are in that place, you've tried everything, done everything, then it's, you know, come to the Holy Spirit and say, God, it's your will that I forgive. And I know it intellectually, but I don't want to. I don't feel like it. Help. Help me to change parts and processes in me that will bring me there. Okay. Sri Radha, hope that helped. Okay. All right. So shall we just close? Um, We'll, we'll take a break. I know we're on three, four minutes early. It's okay. We'll come back at 11 o'clock. We'll close for a break now and we'll come back at 11.